All right, I say we get started. So thank you everyone for joining our session today on management and technological change. This is a brand new course that we're opening as of uh, 2024. So we're very excited to share with you the details about the course um, and just any information that we can share with you from our academics. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, first, I wanted to just introduce a bit more about the business school. So we're a friendly and diverse community committed to the highest quality teaching and research. People from over 80 countries come here to study with us, and we're very proud of the varied perspectives that they bring to our school. Um, another great benefit is that we're in the heart of London. Our students and academics have unlimited opportunities for collaboration, research, and developing their career prospects. And we're also ranked second in the UK for business and management studies, um, which is fantastic. And along with our PGT, we have it's the top 10 in the UK as well. So I say we pass it through to our uh, next slide, please, and we can introduce our academics that will be speaking today. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks, Absolutely. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so, uh, and welcome to everyone. Thanks for joining us. So uh, we'll, we'll start with introducing ourselves uh, and I'll begin and then we'll move across the slide. So uh, I'm John Hindmarsh. I'm a professor of uh, work and interaction at King's Business School. And uh, just to give you a flavour of the kind of research I do, I'll give you a, a sense of two projects. Uh, one where I've looked at the introduction of robot uh, assisted surgery into operating theatres and I've looked at how that affects teamwork and coordination within the operating theatre. And also I'm doing some work on AI tools in uh, uh, healthcare as well and looking at uh, how um, those AI tools are changing work practice and changing kind of um, views on expertise amongst uh, radiographers and uh, indeed doctors. OK, if I can hand over to Minji. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to speaking to all of you. I'm Minji Gao. I'm a lecturer in public services and technology. Again, just to give you a flavor of what uh, my research is about, I'm working on uh, currently I'm working on two projects. One looks at how digital innovation is reshaping the relationship between doctors and nurses uh, in hospitals. And the other one is uh, of my project looks at how with remote working and online platforms, the dynamics between managers and leaders are changing in modern organizations. I will pass it on to Priyanka. Right, thank you so much, Minji. Um, hi, everyone. It's lovely to see you all here, to have you all here. Uh, so my name is Priyanka, and I'm currently a lecturer in public services and technology at King's Business School. And going to my research, um, my research looks at the social impact of technology within the Global South context. So in that, I specifically investigate how technology mediates aspects of power, um, social norms and institutional structures. So I'm currently working on a project that looks at the relationship between women and technology and how women from certain regional groups use social media groups to you know, um, express their problems and devise solutions. So that is something that I'm looking at. Yeah, that's me. Thanks both. So the, the three of us will all be teaching onto the program, but obviously there's a wider program team as well. But the three of us are here today to be able to um, offer some insights on, on the program uh, and particular modules on the program. Um, as Riley said, this is a brand new uh, program for King's Business School. We're very excited about it. It's um, uh, responding to kind of recent changes and recent developments um, that are facing contemporary organisations. Um, if you think about the rapid proliferation of digital tools and indeed other technologies um, that are in the news virtually every day, um, then they offer some really unique opportunities for organisations. Um, organisations, whether they're in the private sector, the public sector, the third sector, um, they're all uh, exploring the impact and potential impact of new technologies. Some are developing teams within their organisations to see how they can um, best utilize, for instance, generative AI or robotics or the metaverse. Um, and even if we think about during the period of the pandemic, things as basic as video conferencing can be seen as quite transformative during that period. I think the pandemic more generally actually offers some um, opportunities for us to reflect on, you know, how it accelerated digitalization in a whole host of organizations. And now as we've come out of the kind of periods of pandemic, then, you know, how are people adjusting 
how are organizations adjusting what are they taking from that experience and that knowledge and and what are they keeping and what are they ejecting and i think there's a lot to learn there around uh, new technologies but these aren't simply technical issues if you buy a cool bit of kit or build a cool bit of kit that does not mean that people will uh, use it or indeed implement it successfully uh, even if they do implement it it may not be implemented fully if they do use it they may not be used in the ways that you anticipate um, and part of the reason for this and actually quite a major reason for this is that people are involved and people are complex uh, uh, and, uh, and, and they bring complexity to this. So we really need to understand the relationship between people and technology in order to understand uh, the opportunities for new technologies, but also the potential impact of new technologies. And this master's programme is really designed to help you to better understand that connection between people and technology, or, or as we put it here, to better understand the social and organisational context in which technologies are deployed and used. Um, just to zoom in on, on one that, that gets a lot of press, which is around artificial intelligence. Um, this is a really kind of neat example of kind of a wider range of challenges around technological development. So uh, AI is running away from people, it's running ahead of people, it's running ahead of regulators, it's running ahead of organizations in the sense that you know, organizations are still trying to work out the best uses of many forms of AI. And we're still unclear about a whole host of implications of AI tools for people and organizations. Um, we absolutely need to better understand the ethical implications, uh, the sustainability implications, the EDI implications of, uh, of new technologies. Um, and AI raises a whole host of interesting but challenging questions. You know, who should we trust? The doctor or the AI tool? Um, it's raising questions about uh, who uh, is accountable and responsible when there are mistakes. Is it the self-driving car? Is it the pilot of the car or the driver? Uh, or is it the car manufacturer? Uh, it's raising questions about to what extent do people need to understand the AI that they're using? or to what extent do AI tools need to be explain themselves to the user and make sense of what they're doing. And even more generally still, it's raising questions about, should we be designing AI tools that are the experts that replace humans? Or should we be designing AI tools that are systems for experts, that help experts uh, to do uh, their work better? And throughout all of these questions, again, the success and failure of these kinds of AI projects and technology projects more generally is not just about technology or technical issues or technical capabilities, but rather the extent to which those technologies resonate with people, their expectations, their work practices, their knowledge, their skills. And I love this quote um, from a roboticist at Nissan who was working on a self-driving car project, which was quoted in a, an academic study some years ago, which said the robotic stuff is easy. What's difficult is the human stuff. Um, a lot of car manufacturers were predicting that self-driving cars would be on the roads in urban environments in Europe uh, by 2020, 21, 22, 23. It's still some way off. And that's not about the technical capabilities of the cars, but when you bring together people and technologies, all sorts of complexity arises and we need to understand that complexity better. Through this masters, we're hoping to give you a much better sense of that interface between people and technologies to make you experts in that interface between people, organisations and technologies. And King's is an ideal place to do a masters of this kind. Um, King's Business School uh, has a key strategic focus on digitalization. So people across the business school, whether they're in marketing or human resources or public services management or economics or wherever, are looking at the impact of new technologies on organizations and on people. And that means that you've got a teaching team who are doing cutting edge organizational research on new technologies. Um, they're bringing that research into the classroom. Uh, and many of us are also involved with the King's AI Institute, 
which is a centre that brings together expertise from across the university to address these kinds of challenges. Um, you can see on many images that we have, uh, both in our backgrounds, uh, but also in this slide deck, the building in which we are setting. You're benefiting from an unrivaled location in the centre of London. It is a glorious building, has an amazing roof terrace as well that looks out across uh, Houses of Parliament and the London Eye, and you can see the Shard and so forth. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful building. It's a great building to be studying in. Um, in the 1920s, it was the most expensive building in the world. Uh, it was initially a, a trade centre and then became the home of the BBC World Service. Uh, and then uh, in 2015, Kings uh, moved in. And so it's a great location to work from. Now, if we bring those things together, there's another benefit from, for you. So um, the fact that we're in Kings Business School and have a great alumni to draw from, the fact that we're doing research in this field and therefore have lots of research part partners, and the fact that we're in the centre of London means that we can bring in and get you to meet um, a whole range of people who are working in this field. So we can look at end user organisations, uh, research and development labs, consultancies who are working on these issues live now. And you can start to see how the programme materials connect to the issues and challenges that they're facing and can help us to resolve those. So, who should you be and what should you want to become? Um, so we think that this programme is designed really for those people who are interested in that and curious, intellectually curious about that relationship between people and technologies that want to know about the cutting edge research in this area and how you can apply it to contemporary issues and challenges. We also think you should probably want to work either in management or consultancy or research in relation to technological transformation of, of one kind or another. Or maybe you want to work in the kind of new responsible tech jobs where um, you're advising companies on the social and ethical implications of new technologies. And if you do want to do those things, then you'll need a range of skills. And so we've designed the program to help you to develop that range of skills. So, for example, we've designed the program to help you to develop a digital mindset. Um, that doesn't mean that you need to code or build or engineer technologies, but rather that you can talk to engineers and coders and developers and understand what they're saying to be able to know the kinds of questions you should ask them about the opportunities and challenges of new technologies. So you need to develop a digital mindset. You need to also, however, be able to represent the workplace, represent the organisation. So you need to understand work, work practice, organisations well. You need to have the skills of a creative problem solver. Organisations face all sorts of problems. There's never one solution that's the only solution possible. You need to be bring your creativity to uh, uh, solving problems faced by organisations. And to help to do that, you need to be a good researcher. You need to have good research skills. What's the evidence base you're going to use to inform decisions? And at some point along the line, you'll need to be a strong change manager. Uh, know the kind of theories of change and practices of change that you can use to make a successful implementation of a new technology. And throughout all of this is the importance of communication skills, the ability to translate between different groups of people, uh, complex, com uh, sorry, communicate complex ideas to those people as well. And we've designed the programme to help you to develop these skills. So let's look at the programme structure. Um, I've put a couple of uh, modules in green there because we're going to zoom in on those in a second. But just to give you an idea or a kind of overview of what you'll be covering on this programme. In the first semester, we have four compulsory modules. So organisations and emerging technologies, uh, which will develop that digital mindset in particular, and, and, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Work practice and technology, which zooms in on the workplace and uh, how you can understand uh, work practice and the impact of new technology. Design and responsible innovation, which helps you to kind of uh, develop your design skills and under understand the design methods that developers are using. And research methods, 
which again is, is critical to develop those research skills, but also for you to be able to hone your abilities to analyze different forms of data, which is absolutely critical in all, all kinds of jobs. Uh, it'll also help with the development of the management uh, research project in semester three, which I'll come on to in a second. In semester two, we have two compulsory modules, change management and new technologies, which we'll talk about in detail, uh, and the design sprint, which brings everything together and um, sets a challenge for you in teams um, to be able to uh, bring those different skills you've developed on the modules together into a, a real problem uh, based learning activity. And then we're developing a, a kind of selection of modules from you to choose from that will allow you to stretch yourself um, in various ways. I've put a couple of examples there, but we have a range of examples from across the business school that we can use. Uh, and in semester three, you have a management research report. Maybe I'll say a little bit about that later, but for now, let's give you a flavor of a couple of these modules. So if I could um, ask Priyanka to talk a little bit about organizations and emerging technologies first. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Yeah, uh, hi everyone again. So, uh, Organizations and Emerging Technologies is a compulsory module that will be introduced in term one of the program. Yeah, and it will essentially weave in different things that you will be covering in more detail in other modules of the program. So it will give you a good overview of what you're going to cover across your MSc program. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, thank you. So to give you a few examples of the case studies that we're going to interact with and the different um, examples that we're going to interact with. So here in this module, you'll be engaging in discussions regarding various emerging technologies, new technologies that are there being adopted in society today. So for example, we will be looking at how governments such as the Greek government or the American government are adopting AI driven chatbots to manage and deliver public services. So in this session, the motivation is to really understand, you know, how practices of government are changing, how governments are managing their relationship with citizens today. So that would be something that we'll be looking at. Another example is, and I think it's the image with the kids with the headbands on their head. It's the use of artificial intelligence in schools in China, where AI powered technology in the form of headbands or chip tracked uniforms is used to monitor the concentration level of students and their behavior in classrooms. So in that context, uh, we will be looking at how educational institutions, uh, you know, in various countries, specifically China as well, adopt such technologies, AI powered technologies, and what impact it might have on teachers, on students in terms of surveillance and privacy. And which might then, you know, eventually have an impact on the education policy of China or the education policy of different uh, countries and how governments adopt that. So this is a flavor of some of the examples and case studies that we will be looking at. And um, through that, hopefully you'll be getting a good idea of how new kinds of technologies are being adopted in society today and in organizations today and whether organizations uh, and society, you know, is capable in taking in these technologies and learning to adapt to them. Yeah, can we move to the next slide? Yeah, so the key takeaways from the module are number one, students will be able to increase their knowledge about a range of new and emerging technologies. And not only that, you'll also be able to develop critical awareness regarding their impact on society and organizations. It's one thing to see how technology is benefiting society and how education practices and government practices are becoming more efficient. But we also have to take our you know, positivist hat out and look at it from a critical perspective and see which communities or people might be disadvantaged or what kind of exclusion or inclusion it's creating in organizations and society. So we'll be looking that, at that as well. The module will also introduce a range of information systems and social science theoretical concepts. And we'll be looking at, we will be looking at, sorry, how these concepts add value in, you know, for us in terms of understanding how technology is being, new technologies are being adopted in society today. 
And finally, students will also be able to develop confidence in communicating methods through which the impact of new technologies can be managed to managerial and non-managerial audiences. Yeah, oh, thank you, that's me. Now to Minji, I think I'll pass it on to Minji now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Priyanka. Uh, hi again, everyone. So it's my pleasure to now to talk briefly about the module that is compulsory and in term two, which is called change management and new technologies. As John and Priyanka was saying, the convergence of different technologies, AI, artificial uh, data analytics, automation is really reshaping how business models, processes, customer expectations in society. We know that organizations that fail to adopt those will risk being obsolete and those that are successfully navigating these transformations can gain a competitive advantage. Yes, technology impacts organizations, but how do we actually do that, adapt to this change? And that's why a program like this and a course like this is important right now because really we'll tap into the human and the technology part uh, in this module. Next slide, please. So what excites me the most about this module is that it really sits at in the at the intersection of change management theories and new technology. And throughout the module, we'll be asking this fundamental question, how do digital transformation and technological advancements impact organization change process? So we will delve into a spectrum of compiling and current topics, not restricting to companies that you are aware of. We'll be using case studies of fashion industry in Brazil, the tourism industry in Switzerland, to really give you a flavor of how change is being adapted, how is technological driven change shaping organizations. But we'll also have hands on activities in class so that you can work together with your peers. We will also host guest speakers who are esteemed thought leaders and industry pioneers. So you really get a sense of what technology, how techno technological driven change, sorry, is being implemented in organizations and what are the challenges people are experiencing when implementing them. Next slides, please. Thank you. I, I think I might be having a bit of a technical issue because the slide is stuck. Uh, I don't know if it's the same with uh, the two of you. Uh, OK, it's working for me now. Thank you so much. So you can see on the right side of the slide, uh, there really is uh, this practical in, uh, in emphasis of this module and what exactly will we cover? We'll talk about the fundamentals of change management principles, theories and the methodologies so that I will bring my research on change management and the human centric approach of change into the course that you can learn from that. We'll also talk about effective approaches to create and communicate a digital vision and deliver it in organizations. Digital leadership, change manager is such a hot concept now, so we'll also talk about the strategies and means to build and lead technological driven change in organizations to make you the change champion, the change manager that you want to be. But being a change manager itself is not enough. So one very important factor that we'll be covering in, the uh, in this module is the ESG, EDI and ethical challenges of new technologies for modern organizations and we'll be talking about methods to integrate for instance responsible AI and data ethics into the practice of change and uh, management of new technologies. Thank you very much. Thanks Priyanka and Minji. Uh, hopefully that's given you a really good idea of the kinds of material we'll be covering within these modules. I do want to flag um, a couple of other uh, modules as well, compulsory modules that, that hopefully uh, are rather interesting and distinctive. Um, so firstly, the design sprint. Um, so the idea with this module is to, as I say, integrate a lot of the knowledge and skills you'll have developed in the first semester and the beginning of the second semester. We'll introduce you to Google's um, sprint methodology in which you'll address a problem, explore a problem, um, generate solutions, um, test solutions, uh, and then present those um, solutions to a panel of non-experts. Uh, sorry, and not non-experts of experts uh, from who are non-academics. Um, so uh, you'll have a five-day sprint 
and that's they're kind of following the structure of the the, the Google methodology, sprint methodology, uh, in order to work together and develop uh, a solution that you can present to these experts. Um, that will give you an opportunity to um, develop team working skills, develop leadership skills, develop creative problem solving skills, and then present your ideas to uh, a non-academic audience um, as well. Um, so I think there's something really rather exciting about that. Secondly, I want to highlight the management research report. Um, for many uh, um, a master's programmes uh, that you'll encounter in the UK, there's a dissertation component. Uh, and this is something you may well have encountered at undergraduate level as well. And those are really important because they get you to do a, to come up with an idea for something you want to research, develop the research skills to be able to explore it and then really contribute to an academic debate. We think that's important too, but many of those dissertations are 12, 15, 20,000 words long. We want you to do something that's uh, 8,000 words long, kind of length of an academic article. And then we want you to develop a short podcast or video where you don't reflect on the academic implications of that work, but on the practitioner implications of that work. What are the what do your findings say to organisations about issues around management and technological change? And again, we think that's going to be a really important set of skills to learn but also then when you go into job interviews and so forth, give you something really meaningful to talk about that you won't just talk about an academic issue or problem, but actually be able to connect that with the practical world of work. So hopefully you've got a really good sense of how the skills and knowledge I talked about at the beginning have informed the program design, but it's not just at the program design level, the module design level, but also at the assessment level. We do use essays and data analysis exercises, um, lengthy kind of writing activities like many other master's programmes so that you can display your understanding of programme materials. But we also have a range of other assessment methods so you can show your strengths in different areas. There will be a number of small scale projects so you can apply theories, concepts and methods to issues, problems, settings of your choice and of your interest. We also have on at least a couple of modules reflective journals so that you reflect on your learning, but you also reflect on your own skills and your own strengths and think about, you know, wh where is it you best fit? Where is it you best add value? Uh, and where is it that you might want to improve? And presentations of various kinds, so important in lots of places, and group work, uh, again, so you can develop your leadership and team working skills. Um, we'll have some assessed group work, um, not massive amounts, but some assessed group work, and then uh, lots of opportunities within workshops and teaching sessions for working in groups. So we hope we've piqued your interest. We're looking forward to answering your questions in a moment. Um, just some information here on application closing dates, um, which are quite some way into the distance. Uh, I should say we, we were, we're looking at applications um, at the moment, so please uh, it apply as early as possible so that we can assess those, look at those and start a conversation with you. Um, uh, but maybe uh, Riley, I could hand back to you um, to uh, take us into the Q&A session. Absolutely. So if anyone has any questions, please guide those to the q and I'll keep an, my eye out. Um, as of right now, I don't see any questions, but I actually had a few of my own. Um, so based on the dissertation, um, would you expect or anticipate that the students would focus on a topic of their choice or something that would be taught throughout their module? Shall I? Take, start start with that and, and, and maybe Priyanka and, and Minji can jump in if if they wish. Um, I think that what will happen, I mean, certainly the students themselves will develop an, an idea that they want to focus on. Um, they'll work with a supervisor to shape that idea. They'll have training also in how to do a podcast or a video in order to be able to translate those ideas. Uh, and many students will come with ideas from their backgrounds and their kind of work experience or their previous study experience or their everyday social experiences that they or organizational experiences that they want to explore in greater depth. But others will get fascinated by one or other module 
and generate research ideas for, out of those modules. So we won't be giving a set of possible um, uh, uh, kind of topics, but we will try to encourage creativity from individuals, either drawing on previous experience or drawing on things that they've encountered on modules within the programme. Perfect, thank you. Um, and as this is a new course, what age group would you um, say is a good age group to apply for it? So um, let me continue. So we're anticipating um, that we're um, primarily going to uh, encourage people who are um, either just coming out of uh, undergraduate study or you know a few years out of um, uh, undergraduate study. So you know you know two three years out of undergraduate study. When where this isn't an executive education course, although that may be possible in the future. So we are really kind of designing it for people um, at, at that stage. We primarily think that most of the people who will come onto the course either have a business management or broader social science background. So one of the things we're going to be doing is demystifying technology, if you like, opening up the black box of technology a little bit uh, to explore people and technology and to show how those kind of prior learnings uh, might kind of connect to this specific field. But we're also open to the possibility that a small number of people on the programme might come from more a more technical or um, engineering or computer science background if they've demonstrated the ability to kind of engage in so on the interest in engaging in social science uh, issues. Um, so the reason that we're hoping for a little bit of a diversity within the program is because of that need to encourage people to communicate across disciplines to draw on different strengths. If you take the design sprint, actually having a heterogeneous group will be really important so that people are bringing different things to that uh, to that project. Um, so but to answer your question in some, we're expecting people to be um, closely out of undergraduate study in the main um, and be from a management and social science background. But we're still really interested in other applications because that might be able to help us to kind of um, develop the cohort um, uh, further. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop sharing now, Riley. Would that be OK? Yep, absolutely. Perfect. Um, we do have another question that came through. Um, is a broad overview of data and info compliance assumed or included? Um, who would be best to answer that? Who wants to take that one? Unless you need more clarification um, of the question. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah, if you can include just a few more details, that would be great. Thank you. Um, another general question was, what type of tech, uh, technology programs might students have access to um, throughout the modules? You mentioned one for digital uh, sprint or design sprint in that course. Could you expand on that? Sure. So I think with a program like this, there's lots of opportunities to engage with emerging technologies. Um, the uh, what's really rather wonderful is that generative AI has been um, shared with the world uh, and we can use that in in lots of ways to help people to better understand what's going on with it, but also then reflect on how it might best be used and some of the issues and challenges that arise in deploying it more generally. Uh, there are some further opportunities around our data analytics modules, for example, to, for people to become much more familiar with a program like Tableau or um, a Power BI um, to develop some skills there. And we can build in some opportunities for accreditation uh, with regard to some of those things. Um, so uh, it, it, it's um, like I say, we're very much focused on the people and technology end of things. This isn't about training people to be coders, um, but we will have opportunities to explore different technologies throughout the course of the program. Is that helpful? 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, doesn't look like we have um, any other questions at the moment. Take a look. Um, in terms of group work um, and presentations generally, are the students expected to choose their own groups or would this be something that you suspect they'll be assigned to a specific group? So uh, I think there'll be some uh, variation across the program. There'll be some opportunities um, to self-select. I think for the design sprint, it would be really nice for people to um, um, come, come together and, and build a group through that and work out what's the kind of um, best combination of people within a, a specific group. So uh, whereas other cases, if you're thinking about the at the level of a specific module and maybe kind of unassessed classwork, then actually being thrown together and, and working out ways of working together is rather a helpful skill to develop. But we all get that in um, all kinds of careers that we go on to afterwards. So so there'll be a bit of a mixture. I think for more, the more of the assessed work, we're more likely to be able to allow people to um, self select and we're really keen on developing a community through this program as well so there will be a induction to bring people together and get people to understand uh, uh, each other and work with each other know each other because we see this as a journey for people and then we hope that they'll continue that journey after graduation so they'll continue that kind of network of connections they'll continue to be able to discuss these events um, with their peers and so forth. So, um, so yeah, so a bit of variation in terms of group work, but we're really hoping to develop a cohort that are kind of keen to continue to keep in contact with each other and help each other as they progress into their various careers. Thank you. Um, so Sarah did expand on her question. So her initial one was, is a broad overview of data and info compliance assumed or included? That was her initial question, um, but she followed it up with evolution of global laws relating to data governance, governance and compliance, or is this much more considered the domain of another expert in the real world? I can take uh, that one if that's all right and then John and Minji can add on to it. Um, so specifically talking about my module actually emerging technologies and organizations. Um, quite a bit of that module I think I would say a few sessions will discuss this how data is you know the laws relating to data governance and compliance how in different contexts so whether it's in the educational context or in the work practice context uh, or in the healthcare context, how is data being collected today? How is it being used? What permissions are set in place? What compliance practices are set in place? And how, you know, you students who will go out in the world in the future will become consultants, etc. How could you um, implement responsible use of data um, and responsible, you know, acquire a responsible understanding of data? So I would say. Uh, your question regarding global laws and data governance and compliance. I think it will be covered in bits and pieces across different modules because each module focuses on technology and the adoption of technology. In my module specifically, it's going to be um, delved in different contexts, the public sector context and the private sector context. The way data is governed, used, um, collected is very different in different contexts. What might be the rules and laws around it? What might be the compliance procedures and how, you know, um, might governments or society or even you know people normal people like us who use Facebook or Instagram or whatever and how data has been collected by us how we understand it and shape it with our voice etc so I don't know if I've confused you but um, I think I think it will be covered in my module uh, to a large extent but also in bits and pieces in other modules because you will be engaging with a range of technologies and how the social context adopts to it and one aspect of that is you know data uh, and you know how it's used and how it's adopted and the laws surrounding it. Yeah, that's my answer. Thank you so much. Um, and if I could just add on to that, because I saw that Sarah has said, oh, how does this impact adoption of digital solutions commercially, socially, etc. So uh, uh, 
the the evolution uh, loss and uh, data compliance is not the main concept of the module that I'm going to uh, the, going to be covering change management and new technologies, but it's going to be a very important backdrop of uh, this session. So, for instance, if we talk about uh, using artificial intelligence to help with uh, companies hiring process, or we think about using AI to help hospitals to diagnose patient conditions. So we'll be talking about what is the impact of adopting such uh, uh, new technologies, artificial intelligence, how do they impact the workers and how do they impact the workflow of the organizations? And uh, by talking about that, we'll also expand a little bit on the uh, digital solutions impact towards the, the target groups, the consumer groups. And I hope that's something that you will be interested in if you join our program. Fantastic, thank you. And we do have another question uh, from Tom Rogers. Um, for someone interested in career in a career change from technology or technology sales to a change management career focused on technology, would this course be open to me? Lots of strong foundations in the course, so I would hope so, but I wanted to get perspective of the panel. Do you want me to jump in? Um, so yes, Tom, absolutely. And you can see if you think about the uh, the kind of um, the discussion we had about knowledge and skills. I mean, clearly from being in technology sales, that communication and translation aspect I think you'll have in spades and uh, and in other areas. However, as you say, hopefully um, you'll develop other skills, whether that be about understanding theories of change, whether that be um, about understanding um, kind of uh, the workplace and how we can better understand the workplace in order to develop and deploy technologies, whether that be about the kind of ethical and social and sustainability implications of new technologies. So well, you would absolutely um, be the kind of person that we would be interested in, uh, in moving from that technology sales focus to a change management career. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Sarah said thank you, uh, Dr. Pat Pandy and uh, Dr. Gao for your comments. Fantastic. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions come through. If um, anyone has any other questions, please let us know. Um, we'll probably give it a few more minutes to get some in. Um, otherwise, we'll close the session probably. Um, thank you everyone so much. All right, doesn't look like we have any others coming through. So thank you everyone for your time. Um, I think this gave a really good um, just little tidbit into the course and the module and what to anticipate uh, next year. So we look forward to see any applications coming through. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.